Oh, right, YouTubers, welcome back to World of Warships with the Angry Nerd. And today I thought we would take a look at the British Tier 3 Premium Battleship, the HMS Dreadnought. Now, the HMS Dreadnought was the Royal Navy battleship that revolutionized naval power. Her name, Dreadnought, stems from the archaic English meaning a fearless person. Dreadnought's entry into service in 1906 represented such an advance in naval technology that its name came to be associated with an entire generation of battleships, the Dreadnoughts, as well as a class of ships named after it. Likewise, the generation of ships she made obsolete became known as pre-Dreadnoughts. Dreadnought was the first battleship of her era to have a uniform main battery, rather than having a few large guns complemented by a heavy secondary armament of smaller guns. She was also the first capital ship to be powered by steam turbine engines, making her the fastest battleship in the world at the time of her christening in February 1906. Her launch helped spark a naval arms race as navies around the world, particularly the German Imperial Navy, rush to match it in the build-up to World War I. Now here in World of Warships, uh, she's not that incredible. Um, but at the time, man, she, she was it. Here, every other Tier 3 ship is also a dreadnought, and they were all built after uh, HMS Dreadnought was. The closest one uh, built to her was the Turin, which is the French, and it was built in 1907, which is one year after the Dreadnought here in 1906. Kawachi was 1912. South Carolina was 1910. Um, Nassau was 1909. Klonig Albert, 1913. Uh, Bellerophon, a 1909. So, yeah, 1906. She was the first one of the class here. So, yeah, um, I have all the sh ships set up relatively uh, even evenly. So, or at least all the Tier 3 ships. So, let's take a quick look at the stats of the HMS Dreadnought. So, survivability, 37,400 uh, is the hit points. Artillery, she has an artillery score of 66. She has 5 times 2, 305 millimeters. Um, secondary armament, 17 times 1, 76.2 millimeter guns. Um, maneuverability, 20 knots. Turning circle radius, 520 meters with a rudder shift time of 11.6 seconds. And concealment, um, detectability by sea, 11.9, and detectability by air, 8.7 kilometers. Now, if you notice something missing there, uh, there's no AA. This ship has an AA rating of zero. <laughs> It has no anti-aircraft armament whatsoever. So, yeah, you can't even select aircraft when they're around you. At least I can't. But anyway, um, we're going to put up a graph on the screen and take a look at her competitors here at Tier 3 in comparison here to the Dreadnought. So, um, <clears throat> for survivability, the... Uh, German Klonig Albert, right, uh, gets the top rating at 41,300 hit points. That is the most here of the tier threes. The worst is the uh, USA's South Carolina, 31,700. For artillery, uh, the ship, tier three ship with the best artillery rating is the Bellerophon with a artillery rating of 68, uh, tied with 
the South Carolina also has an artillery rating of 68. The Bellerophon has 5 times 2, 305 millimeters with a 30 second reload. And the South Carolina has 4 times 2, 305 millimeters with a 30 second reload. The worst of the bunch is the Klonig Albert with 5 times 2, 305 millimeters. Um, the Nassau has the smallest guns at 283 millimeters, but they have a reload of 26 seconds, so they beat everybody by four seconds. But, you know, that's not going to make that much of a difference. Nobody has torpedoes at this tier. Uh, AA Defense, uh, the Dreadnought is absolutely the worst with a zero rating, and the best is the Bellerophon. But the French Turin only has a three so nobody really has good AA defense here at tier three maneuverability the Bellerophon is the best with a rating of 28 and the South Carolina is the worst with a rating of 16 concealment the Kawachi comes in on the top score with a concealment rating of 69 and the Bellerophon the British Bellerophon comes in with a 50. So you can see how the Dreadnought compares to the other ships. Now, why don't we assign a commander to this ship? Well, before we do that, why don't we take a look at the modules. So it is a premium ship. It does come fully upgraded, but we do get, or let's see, I guess these are upgrades. So yeah, all the modules are selected but there are upgrades here so I have selected main armaments modification for the first slot and damage control system for the second slot um, for the um, ammunition and consumables I went with damage damage control party number two and repair party number two you really don't have much of a choice there so you know anyway now let's Add the commander. We'll see what commander skills I put on. Okay, so I have a 13 point commander here on the Dreadnought, and these are no particular order. I'm just going to go through tier one, tier two, and then the tier three. I am not even worried about tier four skills here on a tier three ship. So I did select priority target. I also selected Expert Loader. Um, high Alert for Tier 2, along with Jack of All Trades, and Expert Marksman, along with Adrenaline Rush. For the Tier 3, I selected Basics of Survivability. So, I didn't do anything in the aircraft because this ship doesn't have any, air <laughs> any aircraft. So this is what I did with my 13 points. I'm sure people will do something entirely different, but this is how I have the ship set up. Um, exterior, right? Um, this, I have the white for meritorious service camouflage mounted right now because I thought it looked better. I'm really not a big fan of the standard um, type 9 Dreadnought camouflage that you see here. So, yeah. We're going to leave it white. I thought that looked a little bit better. Um, what else do we have? Oh, yes. I guess I need to tell you how you can acquire the Dreadnought. You can find her in the premium shop bundled with the HMS Vanguard. Now, currently, you can get the Vanguard as a standalone ship, but not the Dreadnought. You have to get it in the bundle pack. Um, this ship, it, it's not bad. It's not, like, outstanding. You're not going to go in and beat everybody up because, hey, you are the oldest ship in the tier. But you are completely comparable to all the other Tier 3 battleships and you can hold your own against some tier 4 battleships. 
the thing that I have had the most problems with in the Dreadnought, as well as the other Tier 3 battleships, is um, AA. When you get set upon by a carrier, these things are so slow and so unmaneuverable that, you know, there's just not much you can do with it. And like I say, with the Dreadnought here with an anti-aircraft rating of zero, uh, you you can't even select the aircraft to even, you know, uh, make yourself feel better like you're trying to fight back. The carriers can just uh, pick at you um, at will, and there's really nothing you can do about it. I've also found the ship uh, being so slow that uh, if you do get out of position, you, it's hard to get back into the fight. So, anyway, uh, that being said... Why don't we hop into a game and uh, see what I was able to do with the HMS Dreadnought. Here we go. Alright, looks like we picked up a big race. Let's take a look at these other battleships. In comparison. So, looks like my best match are the two Tier 3s. But... We'll see. Hopefully, I won't run into anybody who beats up on me. Okay, so, well, we started off here uh, close to the center. And I'm going to try to stay right around the home cap circle. Um, this thing is just really slow. And if you venture too far out and somebody starts capping you, you can't get back. Um, but I should be able to bring fire on uh, most sections of the map if I just kind of stay around in the green circle. Um, depends on how the game's going, but I'm going to stay here until I figure out what's happening. Is it just just seems really slow I guess maybe because I haven't played uh, tier 3 battleships in quite a while but I mean look at we are rocking at 19 19.4 knots right now waiting for something to show up on the mini-map. Alright. See something down south. Um, a Kaladin is down there. That might be nice to shoot at. So, we are going to adjust course and uh, start heading over this way. missed completely close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades Back up. 
Come on. Those gotta be good. There we go. Not much damage on him because he took a big hit right before my shell. Right before my shells got there. St. Louis over there. Kuma right here. Let's see if we can get a shot in on him before he gets behind the island. Let's see. Come on. Oh, we might have let him a little too much. Yeah. And this St. Louis over here, he just won't, he just won't attack me. Kawachi. Wait, the St. Louis is coming out from behind the island. Check these torpedoes. So we're going to wait on him. Looks like he may still be given broadside. Eight thousand, that's not bad. Come on, reload, reload. Before he gets behind this island, come on. Let's see. <laughs> there we go. Oh, and somebody else is shooting at me. I don't see anybody over there to shoot back at, so... Oh, it must be that Kawachi. He's behind the island. But the Kaladin... How dare you... Scuff the paint on my new ship. Come on. Let's see. Oh my goodness! Wow! Two citadels! And my biscuits is burning! That must be the Wyoming. and start regaining some health. All right, we got Akuma over here. Wonder if I can hit him. Let me get these back guns. Oh man, another citadel. Ah. Okay. I got the St. Louis or the Wyoming to shoot at, I'm gonna slow down, shoot at the St. Louis because the Wyoming is going behind the island. So this is basically the only thing I can shoot at right this minute. Those look pretty good. 7,000. Reloaded, just 
keep that same course, dude. Let's see. Oh, he may have slowed down or something. Let's look a little... Not, not near as good. You just... Oh, he's turning. He's turning. Which way is... Which way is he going? Alright. Wait for it. Wait for it. And that looks pretty broadside. Those look pretty good. There we go. Four goal haul. Got 50k damage done. No way I can get anywhere close uh, to that ship in the uh, northeastern corner. That just can't happen. It's too far away. But we're going to go see where that Wyoming has gotten off to. over there behind the island we're gonna go head him off See what he has, 43, no, 32,000 health, have we got 34, um, this might be a good matchup, somebody else is pecking at him a little bit, alright, here we go, he's down to, 30. Give him the one gun on this side and swing these back around, regain some health. Select my secondaries. There we go, 8,500. Get another good volley here on him. Oh, he took out a turret. Come on, reload, guys. I think somebody else killed him. Yep, but I did put a big hurting on him with that Citadel. Alright, 312,000 credits, 3,400 XP with 281 free XP, Devastating Strike, and the 4 Goal Haul. 79,000 damage, 33 hits, 4 ships destroyed, set 2 fires, 5 citadels, 12 hits from secondaries, and spotted 1 ship. So, yeah, it's not too bad. We came in first place on the team.
Um, detailed report. St. McCalladen, St. Louis, 2nd St. Louis, Ubari, and did 28,751 damage to the Wyoming. So the HMS Dreadnought, would I recommend this ship? Um, probably not. Just simply because of the price of those premium packs. Uh, I, I just can't do it. I might could see paying 10 or $20 for a premium ship in a video game, but these are not tangible objects that I'm going to have outside of the virtual uh, world here. So, yeah, I can't spend that much money. I got kids to feed. But if you're a collector uh, and just want to collect all the ships in the game, this one is not that much different than any of the other Tier 3 ships in the game. So, yeah, if that's what floats your boat, then uh, go for it. But I can't, in good honesty, recommend somebody spend that kind of money. So, if you've enjoyed this look at the HMS Dreadnought, hit that like button. If you didn't, don't. Subscribe if you would. But as always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Nerd out.